Getting all around my room My world's so bright It's hard to breathe But that's alright Hush What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on the World of Juice channel and welcome back to another episode of the Honolulu Desperados Relocation Franchise here on Madden 24. We have officially completed 10 full seasons and playoffs of this series that's pretty crazy i honestly when i first started this didn't think i'd get this far i thought maybe we'd get three four maybe five seasons done and then i'd kind of move on to something else but the the thing is i've been enjoying it doing these videos because i've been enjoying building the lore and building the the significance of some of these players some of these long-term guys like micah parsons like anthony richardson like Devonte smith and jalen waddle like all of these legendary players that we've had that are real life players and then we've built legacies for created players like our quarterback jonathan smith i mean some of these guys that are auto-generated that have become channel legends are going to live in infamy forever because they've of what they've done in this series. So it's just it's just been a lot of fun, and I don't know how much longer we're going to go because Madden 25 comes out in August, and so we'll probably start to wrap this series up within July because uh, obviously the new college football game comes out, and that is going to be taking my heavy focus uh, for the the month of July and the month of August while we get ready for Madden 25. So I don't know how much more Desperado football we'll get through. I'm assuming we'll get through a, we, a year 11. But after year 11, I don't know where we'll go from there. It might only be 11 seasons of Desperado football. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not saying that that is official. Uh, but season 11 might be the final season, depending on the schedule of everything, where, we, where season 11 wraps up. Uh, depending in, in time frame of when the college fo football game drops and and all that kind of stuff. I'm still going to be uploading Madden content in between the massive amounts of uploads of the new college football game. Uh, it's just not going to be as, as frequent as it is now because obviously we don't have a college football game to upload with. But when that drops on the 16th for early access, that's going to be taking a lot of my heavy focus. That's going to be where all the uploads come from for the most part. I'm still going to be doing some few Madden videos, uh, but that's not really going to be the popular stuff because that's Madden. Madden's dead at this point, so we'll wait till the new Madden game comes out. But even when the new Madden game comes out, how popular is it going to be? Because now it's going to be competing with college football, and that'll be a month in. And if it's good, a month in, people are are going are they going to be interested in Madden 25 content? Like that's going to be where where a lot of Madden YouTubers start to reevaluate their situations here maybe we move to college football channels maybe we all become college football channels i don't know i'm gonna keep my eye on the uh the the main madden youtubers that i watch and see kind of what direction they go in how they balance it and then i'll kind of like model mine after some of them and see and see where they go and, and we'll figure it out but obviously i'm still gonna be doing madden 25 content because uh, I'm assuming that there's going to be some updates to franchise mode, updates to superstar mode, all that kind of stuff that I want to check out. And I just like playing Madden games, even though they have sucked in the past. I just like playing an updated Madden game. Uh, but that's all for the future. We'll figure it out. But today is Desperado offseason. We're going to be saying goodbye to some legendary players, including Devontae Smith. So it's going to be a sad, sad day. But we are a champion once again. We have won another Super Bowl. So the Desperados, I think we have five, right? We have five titles in 10 years. Is that what it is? Or is it four titles in 10 years? I think it's five titles in 10 years. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it is. It's, it's five because Richardson has two. Anthony Richardson had two before he left. And then Smith has three now. So that's five. So quick math. So I'm pretty sure that's our fifth championship in 10 years, which is basically half. That's, that's exactly half of the of the dynasty so far that's pretty impressive winning five titles in 10 years i'd say that's a successful series but 
Will we say goodbye to a lot of important people today? I don't know. Let's get into it. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. If you want to subscribe to the channel, that'd be amazing. We can lower that subscriber, not subscriber ratio, get it a little bit closer. I would really appreciate that. And let's go see how the Desperados handle the Season 10 offseason. So here we are. It is the offseason coming off of our fifth championship. And we are very clearly negative $145 million. So... That means that we can accept Justin Atkinson's option, but we will say goodbye. We're always going to say goodbye to Devontae Smith. Uh, we will say goodbye to James Killings. We will say goodbye to Austin Batch and our kicker, Jeremy Samuels, but that doesn't really matter. He's not really that big of a deal. So luckily, we had already re-signed everybody that we needed to re-sign, and Devontae Smith is really the only guy that is going to be gone that really matters. And in his career, we've had him since the very beginning. He was here since the very first episode and ever since he's gotten here, ever since, like, when we first started this up, he was one of the big additions we had with Jalen Waddle. They were, like, the one-two punch that we had. And he's put up some fantastic seasons. He did have a little bit of a slip in 2026, but other than that, he's ever he's always put up 1,000 yards except for this past season. But this past year, we've had, we had a lot more weapons to go alongside him. But he's been a, a consistent target. He's been a stud every single season. I couldn't have asked for a better wide receiver. I'm happy that we had him on the team. And now we get to say goodbye to Devontae Smith. You had a good ride. You can sign wherever you want, man. As long as it's not in division like Micah Parsons did. Uh, you can go wherever you want, big dog. Have a good life. Maybe he just retires. I don't know. He probably doesn't retire, but we'll see. We'll keep an eye on him and see where he goes. Nick Bosa is a free agent. Bryce Young is a free agent. Trey Smith Jalen Hurts. This is a huge phrasing class for a bunch of old guys. Where is Devontae Smith? There he is. He's got two teams that are interested in him. We obviously can't uh, offer him a contract. I, have I been saying Jonathan Smith? I meant Jonathan Young. I'm stupid. I don't know why I kept saying Jonathan Smith uh, for our quarterback's name. It's Jonathan Young. I think our other quarterback's name was last name was Smith. So I'm, I'm getting them mixed up. That's my bad. I apologize for getting our own quarterback's name wrong. Jonathan Young is who I has been, have been meeting, and I should have been saying. I'm just stupid. We'll see a Devontae. I doubt that Devontae signs in the first period. He probably takes... He might not even sign. Who knows? He might take a long time. So Nick Bosa signed with the Giants. Trey Smith signs with the Buffalo Bills. Chase Young going to Cleveland. Rashawn Slater. Oh, Devontae did sign. Slater goes to the Vikings. Where did Devontae Smith choose to go? He's going to pair up with Nick Bosa. The Giants gave Bosa a one-year deal. They've given Devontae Smith a two-year deal. So Devontae Smith will head to the Big Apple, or technically New Jersey. But you get what I mean. He's going to New York to play with the Giants to wrap up his career, presumably. Okay, good luck in New York, Devontae Smith. You've been a legendary player here in Honolulu. You will always be remembered. Your, your jersey will probably be in the Ring of Honor. It'll probably be in the Ring of Honor along with Bijan's and Micah Parsons and probably now Jonathan Young's. <laughs> uh, you have been a legendary player for us. And Jalen Waddle. His jersey probably gets in the Ring of Honor as well. All right, so do we even have a pick? I don't even know. I'm assuming if we do, it's the final pick of the draft, or the first round. And we do have, we have a first round pick, but it is pick number 32. Is there even a player that I would even consider trading up for? Probably not, really. There is a top five receiver in Devontae Moore. He's not that far down the board. He's still in the top ten, but number eight is certainly not as hard to get as, like, three, two, and one. Do we need to have another receiver? Devontae Moore could be pretty good. He is a top five talent, which that receiver is kind of a rarity in these auto-generated classes. So let's just, let's just go over here. So... We know that he is a top five true talent. How good does that actually make him? He's five foot eight. He's got elite speed. He ran four three five speed. A break tackle, a deep route running, a catch and traffic. Oh, um, he looks good. He's probably got like star development or superstar development. I would think. Let me just take a look at the squad, because now without Devonte Smith, what does the squad even look like? Do we need to trade to get a first uh, wide receiver? So we have Lynn Lashley, we have Clayton Mahon, and we have Britton. We have three receivers that are unbelievably good that I trust. Then we have McClellan, we have Dixon, and we have Cone. 
do I trust those guys? Or do we need to get this wide receiver to be our fourth wide receiver? I feel like they can get the job done. I feel like they can get the job done. It's not the the biggest need to get a wide receiver. I guess I could scout a couple other ones and see if there's any other one. Like I'll scout Aaron Tuck and see if he's worth uh, worth trading up for. And then maybe there's a is there a tight end that could be good? There's a couple tight ends at the top here that might be good. Lance Kovacs I'll scout a little bit. And then we will look for maybe an offensive lineman. Maybe a defensive lineman. You can never have too many defensive linemen, that's for sure. What about... Ooh, who was that guy? Ramon Grant. Looks like he could be really good, so we will scout him. That'll be my private workouts. Do I want to trade up? I don't know. I need to see... I need to see that wide receiver, that other wide receiver, Tuck. What was his name? Aaron Tuck, I think his name was? I need to see him again. We need to see just how good he is. If he's decent, then we'll consider it. He's round two to three, so he's not as good as as I was hoping for. Is Devontae Moore? Funny enough, his name is Devontae, so we'd be losing Devontae Smith to get Devontae Moore. That'd be pretty funny. Maybe that's that's a little poetic even. Is it worth trading up to get him? That's the big thing. That is the real big question. Is it worth trading up to get him? This Lance Kovacs guy looks really good. He might be worth it even more to get him instead of instead of that uh, instead of the wide receiver. And Ramon Grant also looks really good. He's probably going to be our second round pick. I need to look at this mock draft one more time. So we know that he's number eight to the Chiefs. Is that tight end even projected to go in the first round? There's the first tight end, Luis Hernandez. Uh, yes, so if we want Lance Kovacs, we have to trade up with the Patriots, which is not that far at all. We can do that pretty easily. I think I might want him. I think we give up on the receiver. It's just too far to jump. I mean, it's not impossible. I've done it plenty of times before. I've even gotten higher than that before. But I think getting the tight end would be really cool because then we'd have Friar Muth, who, to be fair, is on his last legs. We have Terrence Harrison, and then we have Elston, but Harrison's the future, plus that other tight end, Kovacs, would be the future. We could move on from Elston at some point. Friar Muth can just kind of fade into the end. I think this could be the right idea. So let's trade number 32, and we'll just do it the, the slow way. We'll go up from 30. Actually, we might be able to go from 30 to uh, from 32 to 30. Depending. No. Okay, we'll have to do it the slow way. We got to go one pick by one pick. The Jets have 31, so we'll do that. And we're only trading... I think it was the Patriots, right? The Patriots had the pick that we needed to get up to, so we can do that. We got to stop the Patriots from getting another franchise tight end, that's for sure. Pick 31, and then the Cowboys, I think, were the team that had 30, and they do. So we'll trade with the Cowboys. They give me pick 30. And then we will trade with whoever has 29. I think it was 28, right, that the Patriots had? So not too far to jump up. Whoever has 29, we will get that pick from them. And it is held by... Oh, no, it was the Patriots. Okay, perfect. So we're already done. We're already done trading. Patriots... We now have their pick at 29. We can take Kovacs. And then hopefully, if everything goes our way, hopefully, we will also be able to come away with that linebacker at pick in the second round. Because he looked, I think his name was like Ramon Grant or something. He looked really good. So that is the goal. That is the end-all, be-all. And we'll see if that wide receiver actually goes to the Chiefs. Here it is, pick number eight. There he is, Devontae Moore, top five receiver in the class or top five player in the class. We'll take a look at him after the after the draft is over in the recap. And we'll see if we missed out on somebody that's amazing. Hopefully we didn't. Hopefully we didn't miss out on somebody that's like an 84 or something. I'd be really upset if he was like an 83, 84 overall. But if he's like a 79 or something, then I can, I can live with that. I can live with missing out on that. 
All right. No! Lance Kovacs goes one pick ahead at, at the Houston pick. Well, that's not the plan. It, he was mocked to the Texans, right? Did I get that mistaken? Was it the those are the Texans that I was supposed to trade with, or was it the Patriots? Well, it doesn't matter now. We didn't get him. Oh, that sucks. I could have sworn it was the Patriots. I could have sworn that was the Patriots I was supposed to trade with. I guess I was wrong. And now we have to pivot and draft somebody else. What are our second round picks? Oh, we have the first pick of the second round. Look at that. That's pretty cool. We have to pivot here and draft somebody else. Who is that other person? Probably this right tackle, Terrell Taylor. But he's also a round two to three guy. He does look pretty good. He's got decent blocking. But he's got a lot of A to C potential. So he could actually be a little worse than I thought. And he might not actually be as good as we're hoping for. This is such a stupid thing. I don't know who's going to be... Who the right option is now that we didn't get this guy. I might as well just take this guy, Aaron Tuck. Let's just take him. Hidden development. We end up getting a receiver anyway. Maybe he turns out to be a really good player. I don't know. But not getting that tight end kind of sucks, actually. <laughs> that was not the plan. The plan was to get him. We have the first pick of the second round. And we are going to use that first pick. Probably on Ramon Grant. Unless... I also like Damian Coleman. Do I think that he's going to be there? I don't know. I also like some of these offensive linemen. Like Terrell Taylor is a good second round value. I really want to get this guy Caleb Cartwright. I'm going to use it on Ramon Grant. And we're going to hopefully have that other guy. He's only normal development. That's kind of crazy. He does have 87 speed, which is cool. We're going to hope that those other guys are still available at pick 32. There's a good chance they will. The center will certainly be there. But will the other players be? So the middle linebacker is gone. Coleman is still there. Beautiful. The right tackle is gone. Terrell Taylor. But the center is the top center in the class. We have pick 18. Does he make Does he make it all the way to 18? I'm going to risk it because I want to take the other dude. I want to take Damian Coleman. He looks too good to pass up on. So he actually does have hidden development. Perfect. So we take two outside linebackers. We have to bank on the fact that the center does not get taken until pick 30 or pick 18. Please be there. Please be there. Please be there. He is still there. Perfect. Caleb Cartwright, welcome to the squad. Hidden development, E7 strength. Okay, we're, we've turned this class around. After not getting the tight end, we have definitely turned this class around and have been able to pick up a lot of very, very talented players. This Will Hilton guy is still on the board. But now, I've kind of run out of options. I don't. I didn't really scout farther than those top guys. So I don't really know what the next move is. Who's the next player that we take? Do we take a D-tackle? Brandon Michaels. 6'5 out of Oklahoma. Decent speed. Looks like an okay player, but probably not a third round pick. Maybe a fourth round pick. Oh, where do we go? Who is the next player that we take? I don't know. Maybe it's this guy, Clarence Patton, six foot four, not the greatest athlete. It's probably not worth it. Probably a fourth or a fifth rounder. I have absolutely no idea where to go with this. This is kind of crazy. Do I take our running back in the third round? Probably not, right? Certainly not that guy. I honestly have no idea. I have no idea where to go. we maybe take a corner but the corners that are left are not that good Darius Joyner he's not that good at all Buchanan's not that good maybe we could take Stefan Truman I guess he doesn't look that good but I didn't really have any other options I guess I could have traded the pick but a third round pick's not going to have that much value really so into the fourth round now Again, I don't really know where we go. I guess we could start taking the guys that I thought were good uh, fourth or fifth round talents. 
maybe we grab ourselves Brian Sherrod or maybe Chris Page, another center, but centers are usually pretty pretty versatile. Let's just grab him. He's only normal development, but 89 strength is pretty good. And it's always good to have depth on the offensive line. After those first few rounds of picks, I just I didn't really have a plan. <laughs> I didn't really have a plan to go after anybody else. Maybe we just keep going after outside linebackers and keep hoping that they're good. Sidney Bradham is the next guy. He's got 91 acceleration. He's probably never going to make the team, but I didn't <laughs> I don't I don't really know where else to go. So, those are going to be the picks for this year's draft. I think we really turned it around after failing to get that tight end because he went the pick before us to the Texans. I could have sworn that he was I could have sworn that he was uh the Patriots pick. Maybe he was and they still just drafted ahead of us. So Aaron Tuck ends up being a 73. Grant is a 75. Coleman's a 73. And Caleb Cartwright's a 71. So I feel like we hit on all these picks. These are all very, very solid picks. Uh, the rest of the guys are kind of buns, but that's okay. How good is that receiver? He's only a 77. I am perfectly fine with that. I am perfectly fine with him only being a 77. That is fine by me. What is his de development trait? It's only star. Oh, that's beautiful. I, we didn't miss out on anything, really. He would have been nice to have on the team. He's got 97 speed, 96 to sell. He would have been a very good receiver to have on the team. But he's by no means a complete like miss of a draft pick. I'm fine with what we have. And this draft in general was kind of buns. 78 is your highest overall player. Yeah, this, is, this was a kind of booty cheek draft class. But that's okay. You're going to get those every once in a while. Especially when you've done 10 seasons of drafts. So that's just what happens. But that is going to do it for the offseason episode. Kind of uneventful since mainly we didn't have any money to spend. Devontae Smith ends up signing with the New York Giants. So we'll see how his career ends up. Maybe he ends up retiring after the season. Who knows what happens. But this is the new team. And Harrison will start over Fryermuth this year. Actually, he can't because he's not the full or he's the fullback right now. So Fryermuth will go into the backup role. Our offensive line's pretty good. We've got the receiving core now pretty good. Obviously, we have Bijan, who's a stud. And then defensively, I mean, it doesn't really get much better than the defense that we've put together so far. So I like the team. We've got potentially one more season to go next year, depending on how long the season takes. And by the time we get to, to the college football game, we'll see. It all depends. But 10 seasons of Desperado football are in the books. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Thank you so much. Stop by and watch. I truly appreciate it. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.